Hi, everybody. I'm trying to figure out my system today. I am just getting back from the Little League Softball Regional in Waco. So I had so much fun. I can't believe how hot it is in Texas right now. Those poor players and some of your daughters and your poor players are probably playing in some extreme heats. So I'm wondering how it's going for them and how they're handling it. Have you guys played in any um, ridiculously hot temperatures? Go ahead and comment in the comments if you have. I'm curious what all you guys have been through. Today I am going to be talking about the topic that I nailed down for this Facebook Live topic. Five crucial lessons that I learned from growing up pitching. So I think it's always important to be able to learn from others' strengths as well as their weaknesses, as well as their failures and experiences that they have been through. Um, welcome on to you guys that are just signing on. Nathan playing with the Oklahoma Spark. Man, just probably putting in some time in this ridiculous heat. So hey, Brandon. Hi, Antonio. Thanks for joining me today. Five crucial lessons that I learned from growing up pitching. So this will be on replay on my page if you ever want to go back and watch it or if you have to leave early, but I don't really want you to leave early. I want you to stick around with me for a little bit of time. Um, yeah, we were just in Waco, which is about an hour drive away from where I am right now. And I don't know if some of you guys saw on my Facebook profile uh, or on my Facebook page, I should say, um, I brought my desktop with me uh, to Waco at my hotel because I've just been working really hard uh, these past mm, three or four weeks. I traveled right before 4th of July and I feel like once I got back, I've just hit the ground running with um, just trying to communicate with you guys better, learn more from you, what you need. Um, and just in preparation for my online training to open enrollment in August, which I'm really excited about. But um, different story for a different day. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about the five crucial lessons. And this is five, but I feel like I could probably list 10, maybe 20. I just wrote down, honestly, I wrote down the ones that came to my mind the quickest because I felt like if they were coming to my mind the quickest, then they were probably the most impactful. Oh, hi, Nikki. <laughs> That's so great. Congratulations. I'll see you guys in um, in Greenville, North Carolina for the Little League Softball World Series. Um, so fun. So Texas West was a team from Hewitt, Texas. Um, or wait, is that the same way as Midway? Is Midway in Hewitt, Nikki? Now I'm confusing myself. I just did eight games in four days. Um, a team from Colorado, two from Texas, one from Louisiana, and then one from New Mexico. And the team that was like very, very close to the field from the Waco area, Midway Little League, ended up winning the regional today. They beat Louisiana, and so they will be playing in the Little League Softball World Series in the middle of August. So congratulations. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's all like pop, like jumbled into my head. So thanks, Nikki. Um, and so they ended up winning. And so it was a huge deal for their team. They're a younger team and uh, clinched their spot to go to the Little League Softball World Series. So congratulations to them. And that's why I was in Waco, staying at a hotel, bringing my desktop computer, doing work in between games. Before games, I would wake up really early to try to get some work done before the games would start. And they were on ESPN Plus and the Longhorn Network. So that's what I've been doing. But um, anyway, I wanted, I, I thought about um, the lessons that I learned that came to my mind the quickest, that whenever I was just writing some things down, preparing for this Facebook Live, I thought about the things that, if it were the things, that, if it was something that popped into my head the fastest and I knew it had made a really big impact on me that I wanted to be able to share with you. And so the first lesson that I learned from growing up pitching, um, that I know can help you and give you some more direction on your pitching journey with your pitcher is I had homework and after every lesson. So after every lesson, I had homework and an idea of a schedule, a plan. Uh, what I wanted to work on after that lesson was complete so that from the end of one lesson to the beginning of the next lesson, I knew what I needed to get done. And it was up to me. 
whether I got that done, it was up to me, whether I worked hard on that uh, with my catcher, which was usually my dad. Um, and that homework kept me on track. My pitching coach kept me on track. Having homework or something to work on, I call it homework, having something to work on and someone to keep you on track is so very important. Someone that you trust, somebody that you respect, somebody that you know is going to be there for you on your pitching journey that you can really, uh, knows that you know the um, direction of where you wanna go and has your best interest at heart. So that was one of the biggest ones that I learned is that having homework after every lesson and having somebody that could keep me on track was so important and I can't imagine my pitching journey without it. The second one kind of along the lines of that and something that we talked about last week um, a bit because it was about pitching coaches but the second lesson that I learned from growing up pitching was it's okay to change pitching coaches and I'm not saying be that person that is changing a different pitching coach every six months or every uh, year, you, you just jumping around. Just like you don't want to be a team hopper. You don't want to be somebody that has a pitcher that's jumping around from different pitching coaches month to month, year to year, because there does need to be some time and an investment to form that relationship and to uh, really try out the things that your coach is asking of you because pitching is not something that's gonna have those quick fixes. Um, pitching is not something that you're gonna have like huge gains overnight consistently. You might have some of those along the way, um, a really great lesson or a great game or um, a great practice and have some big gains, but that's not, it's unrealistic to think that that's gonna happen every time you go out to play, every time you go out to practice. So having a pitching coach that you can trust in, that you can rely on, that you can commit to for an extended period of time is what is 100% what you need, that routine and consistency in your daughter's life and to have somebody that, um, that she can look up to and trust that, that pitching coach. And so the lesson that I learned is that it's okay to change pitching coaches. That doesn't mean that, that you should do it every time. I ended up changing pitching coaches. Um, I went to one from like when I was 11 until I was 15, probably on the verge of turning 16. And at that point, I'm glad that I did that because I had been do going to the same one for five or six years. Felt like I'd really gotten the most out of that coach. And I'm, I attribute that one coach, her name was um, Coach Rischel, uh, I called her Jill, but to, to helping me the most in my current journey and my future journey of playing in college and then now as a pitching coach that I can relate to you. But being able to change coaches just created like this sense of newness and being able to go to a new coach to try new things, to push me a little bit differently, to be coached by somebody in a different way and hear things a little differently. So it's okay to change pitching coaches and to try something new. I think oftentimes we get just so caught up and this is, there's one way to do it and that's the only way to do it. And if we even like listen to anybody else that they're gonna mess us up. And I think that that in itself is something that we need to get rid of because there's just not one way to do anything. And I think that we become the best, best versions of ourselves when we can learn from a bunch of different um, people because everybody has their strengths and weaknesses with how they teach and what they teach. So my third one, um, this is, I, I feel like probably the biggest that came to my mind of like a lesson that I learned from growing up pitching, but uh, giving the option for a pitcher to stop pitching or stop playing softball made me always come back to softball. So that could be in the form of a break or in a conversation. That could be a one-on-one -on -one conversation, sitting at the table saying, hey, is this something that you wanna to continue to do, play softball or pitch anymore? But me having the option to do that, me, my parents putting on me and not on them was something that I felt like always made me, after a small amount of time away from pitching or away from softball, come back to it because there are always hard times. And so there's gonna be slumps and really difficult times in terms of adversity that you're going to go through. Anybody, anybody who's listening to this right now, and that's just life in general. But within softball and within pitching specifically, I 
love that it was me who decided to come back to pitching, to come back from breaks early, to um, take a break and a little bit of time off and feel like, you know what, I can't wait to get back uh, pitching again. But I felt like I was in control. And when a pitcher feels like she's in control, when because there's not very many times that we are in control of the game, but when you do feel like there are things that you can control, you take them and run with them and it empowers you to feel like you can do more. So that third lesson of just my parents giving me the option to not pitch anymore, or not play softball anymore, to not feel like I had to do it, um, made me come back to do it and love it even more whenever I came back to it. Uh, the fourth one, is that experience and game time are huge for a pitcher specifically. Being able to have mound time or circle time or just innings and throw pitches in a game is the absolute biggest thing that you could give a pitcher after she has learned to pitch, right? You don't want to give her game time like two weeks into pitching and expect for her to be great after she's gone to like a lesson or two lessons. Like ideally you would want your pitcher to learn and practice pitching, I don't know, six months, six to eight months before ever pitching in a game, a year if you even could, and then pitch it in games. So that way she felt really comfortable about her practices and muscle memory and the way that she was pitching and then enter a game. But when she's ready, experience in game time is huge and it's an absolute must. So if your daughter, if your pitcher is not getting that on the team that she is on right now, and I, I especially mean game time from probably the ages of nine to 13, especially, of course you want game time forever, but in terms of development, nine to like 13 years old, you have to have that pitching time. She has to have that pitching time so that she can learn. She can feel the pressures. She can feel and understand situations. She can go up against bad weather, against a bad umpire, against a, a really intimidating team. Like those experiences help shape her as well as going to lessons and learning the mechanical side of things and learning different pitches. So one thing that, that I did when I was a young pitcher is that I, I think that you guys know my story at this point is that when I was at a young age, like I, I was the worst pitcher on my travel team. Like I, I was the number four option. I was the option that came in when um, we were playing really good teams and we needed a really slow pitcher because they were gonna be way out in front of me and I could pitch against them for like one time through the order. And so during that time, I, I wasn't really getting better. I was very young, but I wasn't really getting better in games because I didn't pitch that much in games. We decided to change teams and I wasn't as low on the totem pole as I got older, but I still wasn't number one, number two. It was maybe like that number three. So my parents, on the travel team, so my parents and I decided to play like a fall league, local league, because they knew that at my league, I would get time that I would be the number one pitcher, that I would have a chance to pitch in games. And even though it wasn't the same um, competition as what travel ball would be, and it's not, um, it, it wasn't as intensive games and stuff, me, my parents signing me back up for a league or going back to and doing an additional fall league instead of just the spring league helped get me so much more game time. And that was one of the biggest things that helped me grow. One of the biggest things that gave me confidence was just to be able to be out there in games, pitching, leading my team. On my travel team, I wasn't doing it. So whatever it takes to get that experience in game time, especially from the ages of nine to 13, even if it means playing on a team that isn't as good, is gonna be so important for your pitcher later on down the road. Even if it means she's not playing on as good of a travel team, but she's able to be out there and pitching, it's going to help prepare her for later in high school and for sure in college. Those just experience is like the number one teacher, in my opinion, along with having a great pitching coach, experience is such a great teacher. Okay, so the first one that I said was having homework and someone to keep you on track. So homework meaning like after lessons and stuff and someone to keep you on track, a good pitching coach. Number two is that it's okay to change pitching coaches, but give it some time. Don't be a pitching coach hopper around or hopper. Number three 
is having the option or feeling like I didn't have to pitch, but that I got to pitch, that it, my parents weren't going to hate me if I decided not love me or not be there for me if I decided not to pitch or play softball. And side note to that one is that breaks are important. Number four is that experience and game time is huge. And then number five is that working tirelessly on a foundation, so a mechanical foundation, will always pay off. There is no bad time to work on a foundation and to work on little mechanics to get yourself right, to get your pitch right. I remember working so hard and just having video breakdown and comparison and my mom taking pictures of me at the game and seeing you know what was i like in games versus like at practice because a pitcher can be two different pitchers as you probably know by now in game versus practice and so i knew what i needed to work on i knew what i needed to work on in practices but at the same time i knew what i needed to work on in games and so when i say work on yeah i mean getting ahead of hitters throwing strikes whatever but being able to work on my foundation, my mechanics, knowing exactly what one little mechanic at all times throughout my career that I was actively working on, thinking about wanting to be better at was so important. So that last one is that working tirelessly on a foundation always pays off no matter what age you are, no matter what age you are. Um, and I know that it can be like somewhat of a balance too, especially in games because your pitcher is going to want to throw strikes. And so sometimes you're just going to sacrifice some mechanics or speed in order to throw strikes. But that's why, again, you go back to that other one that I said that experience in game time is huge because the more that she's out there and she can push herself to go at a hundred percent of her full speed and to try some new things in games, the quicker that she is going to get better. And I wrote this one down as an extra one. Um, finding ways to practice outside of the game. Oh, okay. So finding ways to practice outside of just throwing from full distance. Okay. This is my like five B one or like my six one that I wanted to add in because I was like typing some things up, but finding ways to practice outside of just throwing from full distance. So I'm talking about drills. I'm talking about those fundamental drills. That's why these two kind of like go hand in hand. Um, and finding ways to like different drills, different workouts that you can do that isn't just going back to the pitching rubber and throwing from full distance and thinking that a pitcher is gonna be able to make corrections and change things from full distance every time from full pitch. There are so many different ways to create your practices and a workout plan that don't just entail like warming up as fast as you can to get back to 35 feet, 40 feet, 43 feet, whatever it is, um, just to pitch full. And I know that every pitcher out there like can't wait to get all the way back and they don't like doing drills as much. But if you are listening to this and you are a parent or a coach, you have to encourage your daughter to continue to put in the time to do the drills that you know are very helpful for her, that you know help make her mechanics good, that she can focus on and try to pay attention to the details of because all of those um, different drills are important for her foundation. But at the same time, I if somebody said, how many days a week should I practice? I always say practice as many days a week as your daughter wants to, but that doesn't mean going out and throwing from full distance as hard as she can seven days a week, six days a week. Being able to find ways to practice outside of throwing from full distance is a great way to work on mechanics while not feeling like you're putting a lot of pressure and, um, and weight and, and, and pitches on your arm. Because when you're doing drills, maybe you can go a little bit slower. Maybe you can try to do more pitches without a ball or in front of a mirror. And there's a lot of different ways to practice, but I think a misconception is that you feel like you, or your daughter probably feels like she has to throw from full distance in order to get better, to work on something. And that's not the case at all. I think that the best pitching coaches find a really great blend of drills and pitching from full distance and molding it, melding it all together um, to be able to, uh, 
uh, get the most out of a workout and get the most out of growth within a practice and within a workout because that's the ultimate goal to feel like you've accomplished something and to feel like every time that you go out to practice no matter what that you've put in time well spent because we all only have so much time um, in our life and in our week and so again if your daughter wants to practice six or seven days a week I, I don't believe in not saying oh no we should only practice three days a week or four or five like be creative and find a way to mix in some workouts that don't just have to do with throwing from full distance so those are my five um, that I wanted to uh, talk to you about and really it was like six and I think I'm gonna make a post after this too um, that is just more like a word post because like I kind of like writing more than I actually like talking in front of the camera believe it or not I don't know I know that I'm like on TV and end up doing that for ESPN but I actually I just love writing um, and so that's why I like blogs and um, like longer posts on Facebook and stuff that just is more me so I'd also put I'm um, speaking of writing and talking in front of the camera uh, I had put a link in this caption and I can uh, get it for you but um, it is a free training that I'm offering to all of you guys and it's a newer one I've been posting the three most important pitching mechanics but I came out with this one as well if that is one that you've already been through and already worked on and, and listened to it's completely free I'm trying to find uh, pull up this this page right now on my page isn't loading what's going on here um, and it's going to be ways to add more confidence to for your pitcher at your practices and let's see I'm going to put it let's see sorry here is the link that you can sign up for it five ways to gain more confidence more confidence in your practices I just added it to the comments would highly encourage you to go over that with your pitcher. There are a lot of action items in there and it is a great way for uh, you to learn how as a parent or as a coach to learn different ways to work with your pitcher, to structure her practices, to be more effective, to get more out of them and um, to just have a plan. I feel like that's the biggest thing whenever you go out to practice is to have that that game plan, this is what we're gonna work on, this is what we wanna do. So those are the five crucial lessons that I learned from growing up being a pitcher. I probably could um, list about like 15 more, I don't know, like make it a list of like 25. But if you have any, if you guys have who have been on here who listened to uh, all those lessons that I said in terms of changing pitching coaches, having homework and somebody that you can um, rely on uh, given the option to, to quit or to not play anymore, why experience in game time is so huge, and then finding ways to practice like outside of throwing from full distance. If you guys have any questions about that, you can put that in the comment. For these lives, I've really wanted to like keep the um, to keep the questions like very topic related. Like the first week we did the importance of a fastball. The second week we talked about um, how to find the right pitching coach for you and kind of all things pitching coach related. You can still go back on my page and, and find those if you wanna go back and, and listen to those as well. Uh, and then today was the five crucial lessons that I learned from growing up pitching. So if you guys have any questions, you can um, go ahead and put them in the chat. I wanted to give a little shout out to Chloe and Jonathan watching from West Virginia. Nikki, I don't know if you are still watching, Brandon. Um, if not, then we can wrap it up too. Gone about 30 minutes, but I know that the comments come through a little bit delayed for me when I am on my computer like this. So I need a, I need, I've been working really hard. I just got back from Waco. And as soon as I get off of here, I'm gonna be putting in more work with my, one of my golden doodles right underneath my feet. Um, getting ready for an August enrollment with tons of new pitchers signing up for my online training. So no questions. Okay. If you think of any questions, you know that you can always put them in the comment, uh, comments section, and I'm usually pretty good about answering them as soon as I can. So 
Um, thanks for hanging out with me on this Wednesday during the day. Stay cool if any of you guys are playing. Um, oh, sorry, Janice. Um, do you offer one-on-one -on -one lessons? And then you also, do you do one-on-one -on -one coaching? So um, I do have my online training programs that you go through and we have a support community. Um, and I'm there to answer like any types of questions or like any, anything that you need. It's, it's interactive in a sense of keeping you on track, having calendars and checklists, um, and something that I'm offering this time, which I haven't announced yet. You guys are here with me right now is that in August for my next enrollment, I will be offering a video analysis option, which I haven't ever, um, or it's been a little while. It's probably been like a year and a half since I've offered that. So um, that would be the way uh, to work with me online is to go through that. Anything that I would work with you on person about or with in terms of like a drill or a concept or um, whatever is exactly what I teach inside of my online programs. So I take you through it, give you a little schedule to follow or you can go on your own uh, pace and do it that way. Thanks, Kelly. What is your favorite not full pitch exercise? Um, so one of my favorite not full pitch exercise, okay, so I've, I'm sitting here thinking of like two or three. The typical like K drill, I just loved that when I was growing up. Like I just loved a K drill, but I felt like my K drill went to the next level when I added like a push and a glide with it. Um, which just helped my leg drive, helped my drag, helped my front side resistance, helped the timing for when I went back to a full pitch. The second one would be long toss. Long toss is by far my favorite, favorite drill, uh, which is a little bit more full pitch, but you're still not going from like 40 feet distance or 43 feet and pitching from there, but long toss is awesome. And then um, my third one would be just being in front of the pitching rubber or the pitching plate and just doing loose arm circles, like just very loose, like getting warm arm circles where you're feeling very relaxed. You're not very tense. It's not very tight. And you're just feeling a loose arm circle and whip and like you're, um, easing into things. So I think that the ability to do that, what I'm describing and do it well is something that you know somebody when they're doing it well has very good body awareness and feel of their release and their spin and their snap um, but that is done again in front of full pitch and you're still doing an arm circle but it's like at 50 percent 60 percent of your full speed um <coughs> sorry let's see at 16, you know how important is speed in your opinion as far as game pitching time? I think that um, every pitcher is going to have their own strengths at any level, at 10U, 12U, 14U, whatever it is. And I think that owning your strengths, whatever those are, at any age group, and not just owning, but knowing your strengths um, is going to be the way that you get more amount of time and just own who, who you are and believe in what you're doing and believe in the role that you have and the confidence that you can have behind what you're doing. So um, but that is my way of saying, like I think that any pitcher can throw any speed and be and truly be successful. But if you throw 45 and you are in 16U and you're just always questioning, always wondering, always comparing, then you're not gonna be your best self when you're out there because you're just constantly gonna be comparing yourself to others instead of owning who you are. So, um, speed is something speed is not everything so as far as game pitching time like if i was a coach if somebody who was throwing harder was having more success then i'm going to throw that person if somebody who is not throwing as hard but has great spin and a great change up is having more success then i'm going to throw that person i'm going to give them more game time so it's all about results going out and being able to prove yourself but you can prove yourself as a pitcher if you own who you are and if you know your strengths I mean, the end, bottom line. So taking advantage of your opportunities and being able to make the most of them. All right. Um, I'm going to hop off. Thank you for hanging out with me. More to come over the next couple of weeks. And I'm always posting and 
watching my comments every day. So good luck to those of you guys who are playing this week and uh, in other states. I'm here in Texas and I am signing out.